There's loads of different aspects that I think we need to implement, but fundamentally I think one of the first things we need to do is stop involving them. Because I don't know, if you, do you think there's any kind of significant difference between like a chicken and a pig and a dog and us that would, would justify that? I don't, I don't think there is a tool. I cannot find one <laughs> for the life of me. It's a really, really difficult moral question. I mean, I love dogs. Mm -hmm. And I see what goes on in China once a year. Oh, no, the Yulin, yeah. And I just want humanity to disappear at that point. Do you know what that is? Um, I'm presuming it's some kind of factory farming. Yeah, so, so it's Dominion, it's a documentary and it shows some factory farming but it also shows like the locally sourced organic free range sort of um, conditions for animals. So we're just trying to show people the consequence of paying for that industry and what that looks like for those animals. And um, yeah, we're trying to encourage people to go vegan. So. Do you, do you know about veganism? I'm wrestling with this in my conscience constantly. <laughs> yeah, yeah, why are you wrestling? What do, what do, you, what do you think? What's, what's holding you back? <laughs> I think as a, as a species, right. from an evolutionary perspective, mm -hmm. if you look at all the indigenous populations around the world, yeah. virtually, and I'm stand to be corrected, but from what I've read and from what I understand, none of them are vegetarian or vegan. They all hunt to gather mm -hmm. in, in origin. I think there's been an instance... And they all eat meat. And that, that's the origin of the human species. That's yeah. us in our natural state. Mm -hmm. Without all this bollocks around us, that when we are just living mm -hmm. on the land, we hunt and kill and eat animals. My issue with this kind of argument... The well, it's not an argument. Well, yeah, I, I get what you mean, though, but if we kind of, like, look I'm at that... at it historically. Yeah, but then if we... Obviously, we extrapolate from that what we all do, right? So we think, OK, well, if we go back and look at what we would do, you know, were we, were we out there, um, we would probably kill any animals, and we, we probably would, right? But given our you know, where we are in civilization, we have the ability to not do so. If we can conclude, well, that's a harmful thing to do, if we're not... So if it's we're, a moral argument. Yeah, absolutely, because they are, they're subjects, they're, you know, individuals just like we are. There's no morally relevant difference between a human and other animals that would justify doing that. So, yeah, absolutely a moral argument. Yeah, I can see that. But mm -hmm. Again, the majority of other animal species hunt and kill each other. Yeah, exactly. And we are just animals. Yeah. Well, I'm an anti theist. Uh huh. Yeah, I'm yeah. I'm an atheist. Yeah, I'm, I'm also, I'm like agnostic, so I'm atheist, yeah. But um, the thing is, though, are as we, you I think we are just animals. We're just evil. But yeah, as you say, though, we animals hunt and kill each other. They, they kill within their own species. They sexually assault each other. They do horrible things to each other. They'll kill babies just because they don't look right to them. They don't look like them. And it's like, well, we look at that and go, well, that, that's horrible to do to that individual because that's harmful, that's exploitative, or, you know, that, that's something that would take their life away from them. And it follows, logically, that the same for those animals. We can't just kind of cherry pick what one we do because we would do that, you know, out in the, out in the wild. Do you know what I mean? Because I, we, if you look like, for example, like kangaroos will kill joeys that are like albino, and that other species have done so. You know, there are animals who will sexually assault other animals for fun. And it's like, well, we can't just because we, you know, that's an appeal to nature fallacy. So. Yeah. yeah. I am sympathetic to the argument. I yeah. took a picture last Christmas, mm -hmm. just up there with McDonald's and the, and the, the soup kitchen and there was a, a line of people mm -hmm. queuing to go into McDonald's and a line of homeless people queuing up for the soup kitchen uh. and I just thought that's just, I mean I'm not stuck directly relevant but the juxtaposition of where our society is mm. now is, is quite You important. know what though it is weirdly relevant though if you think about it because obviously the distribution is the problem with world hunger as well it's not just because oh we have like no food for people like but at the same time we breed there's about uh, 56 to 70 billion land animals on the planet you know, every, every year, and they are eating crops, some of whom have a high, higher recommended daily intake of calories, like cows. They, they need a, a, a lot more calories in a day than we do. So they're eating a large proportion of our food. Like, 
I think it's about 90% of the soy grown in like um, you know, South America is actually fed to like cattle and other animals. We import like a million tons to the UK from uh, you know uh, Brazil and Argentina to feed to chickens, pigs, cows. They they have a, a massive amount of our resources. So I, I think world hunger. I don't think it'd be solved if we went vegan because obviously it's distribution, but huge difference. Yeah. One more question. Sorry. Yeah, sure. Guys, yeah, guys, guys, guys. Irrespective of its merits and how credible the argument is, it just seems that so futile. So many people are so disinterested; they don't mm -hmm. want to educate themselves. They're not interested in. I know. I know what you mean. Food comes from. Yeah. It just seems like you're climbing a mountain. To try to I know. I, it mind. feels like that all the time, but constantly people are. I'm really difficult to convince. I'm stubborn, and I changed my mind like seven years ago. As well as that, we are seeing, you know, an increase in the. Uh, the, the popularity of the, the term vegan, people searching it up, people you know changing their habits. They're, they're not ever, not everyone's like going vegan, but some people are doing like reduced tearing and stuff like that, which obviously still is a moral issue, even if you're doing something you know sometimes. Um, however, you could you could say that about literally anything. Like if we look at any point in history, the, the way in which say like, women were treated, like oh, yeah. it's like. I get. I, I guess it would have been the same thing that would have been asked to women. Like, oh god, it seems so wild to think that one day you'll get voting rights. Like, but you're talking about people's appetites, and, and <laughs> when, when hunger hits, I, well, yeah, turn when, off their common sense. Yeah, but the thing is, though, when a lot of the time you find that people, because all these like plant-based alternatives that are coming out, it's not mainly vegans purchasing them. It's actually people who, you know, are non-vegans. It's all wrapped up in plastic, for crying out loud. I, that cannot be the answer, can it? I know. All the energy that went into producing that mm -hmm. little bit of non-meat food, you know, Yeah, well, plastic. when we look at plastic as well, a massive problem with animal agriculture, because, you know, they found like in the Great Pacific Garbage Patch, you know, that massive, they've taken a sample of that, and about 56% was coming from fishing gear. So plastic pollution, a massive proportion of that is due to animal agriculture. So all these issues that we're seeing that are destroying the planet, well, it, it, they're directly linked to animal agriculture. So if we, if we see these as problems, like people say like crop deaths, you know, like all these animals who are killed, but then forget how many crops are actually made for those animals. And it's like, how are we going to get people to consider rodents and insects when they, they want to stab an animal in the head for a sandwich? Like, <laughs> you know? Yeah. It's just, if, if we want to deal with any of these problems, I think th this is a massive elephant in the room that we need to just address. And as you, as you say, people are futile, but these, these alternatives do exist. They, they are there. We just have to put our hands somewhere else in the supermarket, just have a you know, look at the back of the packet. Or maybe and, not go to the supermarket at all. Or maybe not, you know, there, there are so many places in Norwich, like there are, there's like Moorish down there that, that they're amazing, they do. I would advocate growing your own. Uh, yeah, you know? unfortunately, not not everyone. A lot of the houses I've lived in didn't even have gardens, so it, it's difficult. That's but where the problem lies. Yeah. From, from, from the ground up, we mm -hmm. need to build a completely different society. We That's do, but I would say, because uh, I, I agree, obviously, there's loads of different aspects that I think we need to implement, but fundamentally, I think one of the first things we need to do is that, stop yeah. involving them. Because I don't know if... You, do you think there's any kind of significant difference between like a chicken and a pig and a dog and us that would, would justify that? Because I don't, I don't think there is a tool. I cannot find one <laughs> for the life of me. It's a really, really difficult moral question. I mean, I love dogs. Mm -hmm. And I see what goes on in China once a year. Don't know oh, the Yulin, yeah. And I just want humanity to disappear at that point. But, you know... But then I look at a chicken. Mm -hmm. And nothing happens, really, no, no, is no, it? No, or are you no, not sure? No, seriously, I'm a mm -hmm. very sensitive person. Okay, yeah. I just, I'm trying to untrain my brain from years and years. Con of indoctrination, con is it conditioning, exactly. yeah, socialization, exactly. isn't it? To, yeah. I'm trying to learn, I'm trying to teach myself, you know, but it's, I, it's I, a difficult journey. And I watch a lot of vegan videos on mm -hmm. YouTube, you know, like vegan games and... Um, <laughs> I thought you were about to say my name then for a second, because oh, mine's really, really similar to his on there. It? Yeah, it's vegan gaze, as in like, oh, looking. Wow. <laughs> I was like, what? But there just seem to be so many health and hunger issues associated with it. Health and hunger issues associated yeah. with veganism, sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, again, so maybe I haven't. Yeah, so he, he's no, yeah, no, he's he's um, talked about this quite a bit. A lot of the time, people they get into veganism, and it's it's more like they're into the plant based, 
and they are trying to diet. So it's it's not that actually that so they're like oh yeah I ended up with these problems my hair fell out and and all these things that you attribute to a, a calorie deficit like over a long course of time, but. The Academy of Nutrition and Dietetics, it's like one of the lead, largest bodies you know, of, of dietitians and you know, experts, they, they state that a plant-based diet is suitable for all stages of life, including infancy, pregnancy, you know, these crucial times where we need those nutrients. It's just obviously like, as is advice for everybody in a modern, you know, modernity to consume supplements and make sure that if you want to be healthy, which I hope we all would, that we are, you know, filling in those gaps with supplementation and, can I ask you one more question? Yeah, sure. Sorry, yeah, no, Are you familiar sorry. with Jordan Peterson and his, his daughter Michaela? Yeah, so I am familiar with Michaela. Um, so there's a lot of issues. It's been a while since I've like Beef looked at and salt diet cured all her ills. So the problem is when we and look that at that. With my head, you know. Yeah, well, it's it's difficult when someone says with such conviction, "This made me. This cured me." But the, the problem is that that's an anecdote. And when we look at something called like the hierarchy of scientific evidence to see you know about truth claims and whether they're valid anecdotes aren't even on there we want to look at like the the meta-analyses the the cohort studies the randomized control trials the things that have actually been conducted on plant-based diets and see whether or not it's having that good effect but an anecdote and when i I'm, as far as i'm look, i've looked into like the carnivore diet or her lion diet I can't find any like legitimate studies on you know how it's so good. The my speculation and the speculation of a few people is that because obviously you're, you're ridding of so many food groups, these issues and these sensitivities, they they won't erupt because your food group is so strict and narrow. But then when you go back to eating other foods, you're just going to feel horrific. It's not. It's it's masking a problem from what I've seen, not like actually dealing with the problem. I appreciate your time. It's a really good but Yeah, thank you so much. It's if so, you want so any more stuff. to find people who can talk um, from an informed point of view. <laughs> I appreciate that. <laughs> can I ask you one really final challenge? Yeah. Question? Oh, yeah, I've got it. <laughs> challenge me. Are they leather shoes? No. They're, so when you look at the back of uh, the Dr. Martins, if they've got this kind of like light yellow, they're, they're vegan ones. They're what are they called, made of? Um, so I think it's some sort of plastic. All oh, right, okay. But yeah, um, so... So you are 100%? 100%. Oh, yeah. So this is... It says acrylic. Yeah, I, so I don't wear. Not, not no, no. So sheep, naturally, they would have very small amounts of wool. We wouldn't need to intervene as human beings. So they've been bred that way. Yeah, they've been selectively bred to overproduce and then be dependent on us. So this kind of this exploitative relationship happening, where they they rely on us, and then obviously they they, they get killed. So, you know, so they all end up in the same slaughterhouse. So it's this exploitative relationship where we think that we can just you know, make them a problem for them and then justify killing them, harming them, exploiting them because we created that problem for them, mm. which, uh, yeah, I... No. What's the trend? What's your understanding of the trend? Is it up, down, flat? What, the tre uh, what for veganism? Yeah. It's, it's on the up and I think it's following, like, you know, are you familiar with the concept of the innovation curve? No, that's one oh, so yeah, you have a very slow rise and then suddenly you have a boom. And oh, there's right, like okay. philanthropist billionaires who have spoken about the fact that they think dairy will be dead by 2030. So I think we're going to see a boom in maybe five years. But you never know really, do you? But I think you should be ahead of it. Just be like, I told you so to everybody else. True. <laughs> Moral high yeah, did I give you a card? You did, yeah. Yeah, okay. You. Well, thank you so much. I appreciate you chatting to thank me. You. And thank yeah, you. Thank you. Cheers. Thank Bye. you.